Now, today's gospel is from Matthew chapter 18. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he could pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our brains aren't good with big numbers. Imagine I have a few pebbles in my hand. I tell you I'm going to drop them on a table between us and I want you to tell me how many there are as quick as you can. Studies have shown that most people can recognize five to eight objects at a glance without having to count. If there's more than that, you have to start counting them. We're going to talk about numbers much bigger than that. In today's gospel, Jesus talks about a servant who owes the king 10,000 talents. There's also a second servant who owes the first 100 denarii. What do those numbers mean in 2020 dollars? One denarius was a day's wage for an average laborer. I saw a now hiring sign on McDonald's recently that said they pay $13 an hour. For an eight hour shift, that's $104. So 100 denarii are 100 days wages, or $10,400. How much is a talent? Here's where some numbers get really big. One talent was 6,000 denarii, or 6,200, $624,000 in 2020 dollars. That means that the 10,000 talents the first servant owed the king was $6,240,000,000, or $6.24,000,000,000. At $104 per day, working five days per week, it would take an average McDonald's worker 230,769 years to earn $6.24 billion. Numbers this big break my brain. I can't comprehend how big 6.24 billion is. And that is the point Jesus is making in this parable. When Peter asks if he should forgive someone as many as seven times, even that number was generous. Some teachers in Jesus' time taught that you should forgive three times. Because after that, you started to doubt the sincerity of the one asking for forgiveness. But Jesus said not seven times, but 77 times. And then he tells this parable about a king who forgives his servant a debt equal to over 200,000 years working for the daily wage. In Jesus' time, the entire annual tribute for Judea, Samaria, and Idiomia was 600 talents. The servant owned the equivalent of 17 years of taxes from three states combined. Can you imagine owing someone the amount that everyone in Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota pay in taxes for 17 years? Of course you can't. Jesus takes this parable to a ridiculous extreme to show Peter and us the ridiculous extreme that God goes to with forgiveness. 
Forgiveness doesn't come naturally to us. People have an innate sense of fairness that often isn't satisfied by forgiveness. When someone wrongs us, we want justice. When someone murders or steals, we want them to go to jail. When someone cuts us off in traffic and five miles later we see them pulled over getting a ticket, we are happy that justice was served. When someone wrongs us, we feel that something is unbalanced, like there is a debt that needs to be repaid. That feeling of unbalance needing to be balanced is enshrined in our criminal justice system. The statue of blind justice holding a set of scales is found in every courtroom. That image dates to the Romans and the Greeks. One use of scales would be in the market to find a fair price when exchanging goods. Fairness and justice go together in our minds. It seems fair for a petty shoplifter to get sentenced to a few dozen hours of community service. When that same shoplifter is sentenced to 10 years of hard time in prison, it seems unjust. And for huge crimes, like a Ponzi scheme, stealing billions of dollars from hundreds or thousands of people, we expect the guilty people to get huge sentences, like Bernie Madoff serving 150 years in jail. These huge numbers I've been talking about break our brains, and so does the idea of forgiveness that Jesus is illustrating. The word that Peter and Jesus both use when they talk about for forgiveness is apheso. It means let go. Outside of the Bible, when Greek writers used that word, they were talking about finances and debt. In the parable, the unforgiving servant asks the king to let go of his debt and then refuses to let go of the smaller debt owed to him. So many words we use for money are also words we use when we talk about sin and forgiveness. When I was young and naive and had my first check card, I didn't understand that it would still work when I didn't have any more money. My bank gladly gave me a debt of overdraft charges, and when I asked them to forgive those charges, thankfully they did. They let go of my debt because I asked. In Greek, the word for sin is the same as the word for debt. That's why some translations of the Lord's Prayer say, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. When was the last time you really thought about the words we said just a few minutes ago in the Confession and Forgiveness at the beginning of worship? Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Think about how many times you did not love God with your whole heart. Think about all the times you did not love your neighbor as yourself. All the times you did something you weren't supposed to do. All the times you did nothing because it was easier than doing the right thing. All the times you thought about breaking one of the Ten Commandments, even when you didn't follow through on those thoughts. Now think about what a fair price would be to pay the debt of all that sin. If you are honest with yourself, you are thinking of an unimaginably huge brain-breaking number, something huge like 10,000 talents or $6.24 billion. And if you aren't thinking of a number that big, we might need to bring back the confession and forgiveness from the green hymnal so that we can say, if we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we ask God to forgive our debt of sin, it will be let go. The only thing that we must do to follow God's lead and is to follow God's lead and forgive and let go when others ask us. If someone cuts you off in traffic, let go. If your neighbor starts an argument because you have a different candidate sign in your yard, let go. If someone in the store snatches the last case of toilet paper or eggs or whatever the next thing we decide to hoard, let go. If that person you lent money to still can't pay you back and you didn't need it anyway, let go. If your friend or relative you haven't seen in years posts the most offensive meme on Facebook or Twitter that you've ever seen, let go. If your sister is being super annoying and won't stop bugging you to make a snowman together, let it go. The hardest part of forgiveness is the letting go. When we truly forgive and let go, it doesn't feel fair. But that isn't what forgiveness is about. Stormy or Martian said, forgiveness doesn't make the other person right, it makes you free. Najwa Zebian said, today I decided to forgive you. 
not because you apologized or because you acknowledged the pain you caused me, but because my soul deserves peace. One last quote. Forgive me. I could not find who originally said it. Forgiveness doesn't excuse their behavior. Forgiveness prevents their behavior from destroying your heart. So today, think and pray about those things you haven't been able to forgive. Pray for God to help you and have the strength to forgive. And then let go. Amen.